Good afternoon for those who have already joined. Maybe you can use the Q&A block at the bottom of your page to just say who you are and from where you phone in while we wait for the time of 3.30 when we will start the webinar. I see we already have 20 joins, so just use that Q&A block at the bottom of the screen. If you take your cursor down, you will see it. Elmi, maybe we can ask everyone to just give us an indication of where they're joining us from. Yes, I, yeah, yes, one. Hi, I'm Nick from South Africa. Hi, Nick, welcome. And here's a Yuanita Cup from Queenstown. Welcome, Yonita. Should you use the chat or q and I think you can use the chat. It doesn't matter. I can, I'm versatile and I'm agile. Pia Loveskachny, welcome. Welcome, Hannah from Cape Town. And Pia, from where are you? Carla is from Pretoria. Aurene is from Bloemfontein. Itumaling is from South Africa. Sitandwik Inkosi is from South Africa. Nicole is from Joburg, Olivia from Durban, Alreen from Bloemfontein, Pia is from Belleville, Cape Town, and Sharnay from Joburg. Kuda so from Joburg. Yes, yes. We would have reached all of these people without the lockdown. Johan from Stellenbosch, Kuda from Joburg, Kirsten from PE, Thias Shin from Joburg, Tracy Lee from Cape Town. People are joining at a vast speed and rate. That's great. Tracy Lee from Cape Town. Oh, I already said hi to her. It's another can minute I, to go. Sorry, Jennifer. In that minute, Elmi, can we maybe ask uh, if anyone has done any of the assessments or seen any of the reports, if they just could indicate with a yes? Right. I'll give you feedback now. We have now 45 participants online. That's wonderful. 46, another minute, uh, almost no more minutes. Right. I don't want to delay your time with Chancellor. So good afternoon. I'm Almy Castleman and I'm from Golden Key International Honor Society and I'm the Regional Director for Southern Africa. Thank you very much for joining us in this extraordinary time um, where we start to introduce webinars and make use of the time to actually get experts like Janther and I do to come and talk to us and our members of Golden Key International Honor Society. Janther is a senior organizational psychologist from HFM Talent Index South Africa, and he will provide detailed information into the uses and also the benefits of the HFM Talent Index tools, including specifically Learning Agility Go and the Future Me. You will hear many uh, times we will make reference to Learning Agility Go and Future Me, so just watch out for those. And we will also focus on these in terms of your personal development, which is one of the pillars of Golden Key International Honor Society. 
Jonathan will also share some of the development insights he gathered from his experience working in talent and consulting fields for over 18 years. So we're very privileged to have Jonathan with us. Thank you very much for the time, Jonathan. We are on almost 60 participants, which is great. And um, I'm going to hand over to you so that you can um, start with your information. And then I just want to ask participants, use the Q&A block at the bottom of the screen to pose questions during Jonathan's um, presentation. And he will give us time to specifically look at those questions with a high frequency, and we will respond to those. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Omi. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I almost didn't recognize myself in that introduction. So we at HFM Talent Index South Africa, we are very excited and we feel very privileged to be partnering with Golden Key Society to be bringing you this webinar and also the opportunity to actually undergo some of the assessments yourself. Now, I know that some of you might be familiar with assessments, maybe from a career counseling point of view, or you might be aware of the fact that lots of people undergo assessments during the recruitment phase. And at HFM Talent Index, actually most of our focus is with organizations, either in recruitment of their, their talent or development of their talent and management of their talent. But together with Golden Key, we realize that it might be too late once the individual is already in the organization to only then start thinking about what are my areas of strength, what are my possible development areas, and is this the right field for me? So that is the reason that we've decided to actually make these available to you while you are still in the academic environment. And you can also benefit from the results of the assessments in your academic environment as well, specifically through, as Elmi said, the Learning Agility Go and the Future Me. So now I'm going to be testing my agility a little bit. I'm going to be sharing my screen with you and take you through a little bit of information before we actually talk about the, the two assessments. Okay, so the two reports that Golden Key has made available to you are called the Learning Agility Go and the Future Me report. Both of these reports are based on specific assessments that are completed online. The Learning Agility Go, for example, is dependent on you completing the personality assessment and the motivations assessment. And the Future Me is relying on the personality, motivations, and the interest assessment as well. I am going to take you through those two reports to explain to you what sort of information you can get from those reports and how to actually utilize that information in the academic and in the work context. Let's first talk about agility. So this is a term I think that is extremely relevant in our current situation. Um, so unfortunately, we were all thrown into the situation where we had to learn how to, to still operate without being able to physically be in the environment that we would like. For example, we can't attend lectures, we can't actually go into our offices. So how agile are we and can we actually cope with the situation? So agility encompasses remaining effective in a wide range of circumstances, especially new and changing and ambiguous situations. So incidentally, our definition of learning agility encompasses all of these elements. Learning agility is a fairly new construct, which uh, will not be surprised if most of you have not heard of it. The first thing that I want to point out is that learning agility is not a cognitive construct. So please don't mistake it with learning potential or cognitive ability, but it is rather looking at your predisposition towards new situations and your drive to wanting to become successful in new situations. So the short definition of learning agility is the ability to develop effective new behaviors in the face of new experiences. So now is a really good example. The new experience being that we can't go to our workplace or we can't go to the academic institution. How can we make that switch to working virtually, to learning virtually and engaging with people virtually? That is what learning agility tells us. A lot of research has been done around learning agility. And what we have found very conclusively, not just us as an organization, but internationally what has been found 
is that learning agility is very well positively correlated with both potential and performance in the workplace. And we also know that there is a strong positive correlation with leadership success and learning agility. In other words, if you want to become a successful leader and if you want to be successful in the workplace, then you need to have insight into your learning agility. And the good news is that you can actually develop learning agility. But the starting point is actually knowing what your profile looks like. Those of us that are high in learning agility, we thrive in dynamic, unpredictable, and fast moving environments. And the report also aims to give you an idea of what is your learning, learning agility profile and how can you leverage off your strongest elements and also develop those areas that you might be relatively lower on. Learning agility consists of five separate dimensions and all taken all together, it gives us an overall learning agility profile. The most important element of learning agility is self-awareness. Self-awareness is giving us an indication of to what extent does the individual understand their strengths, their possible limitations, to what extent do they want to grow and develop, how comfortable are they being critical of the way they do things and wanting to actually improve that. So the higher the self-awareness, the more likely it is that your learning agility will overall also be higher. The other elements of learning agility are firstly change agility. Change agility looks at the extent to which an individual is comfortable with new experiences. So how curious is the individual? To what extent does the individual enjoy new experiences? So for example, using Zoom might be a completely new experience, but how comfortable is the individual embracing it? That is the function of change agility. On the low end of change agility, those individuals prefer an environment that is more constant, more dependable, reliable, and even predictable. And as you know, it's very difficult in this day and age to find an environment that is constant and predictable. The next dimension of learning agility is mental agility. Mental agility, not to be confused with mental ability, is telling us how comfortable is the individual with creativity, coming up with new ideas, how comfortable is the person dealing with vagueness and ambiguity and maybe even a lack of detail. On the lower end of the scale, people with low mental agility prefer a little bit more of a here and now, hands-on type of approach. In other words, let's just do it, let's just not think about it too much. High mentally agile people want to understand, they want to dissect, they want to understand the underlying mechanism of something. The third agility, or rather fourth agility, is people agility. People agility is not just people skill, but it's rather being constructive in the way you actually interact with people. So being open to different backgrounds, listening to people, wanting to learn from other individuals. Those of us that are high in people agility are comfortable collaborating, comfortable learning from others, comfortable with the process of giving and receiving feedback. So in any coaching situation, People agility is important for both the coach and the coachee. On the low end of people agility, those individuals are a lot more comfortable in their own opinion, their own judgment. They're a lot more comfortable operating independently. They don't feel the need to collaborate with other individuals. The fifth agility is results agility. Those of us that are high on results agility, we come across looking ambitious, confident, driven, goal-oriented, these individuals are very comfortable formulating goals. Even if things change around them, they're comfortable reformulating that goal and persevering towards that goal. People that are low on change agility can come across looking a bit more complacent. They might understand what needs to be achieved, but they might not necessarily persevere if things get in the way, and they might not necessarily be comfortable reformulating the goal if necessary. So that is learning agility. You'll receive an overall learning agility profile as well as individual uh, scores or indication for the individual agilities. Here's a screenshot of what the learning agility Go report looks like. Once you have completed the personality and the career drives assessment, so each one takes roughly 20 minutes to complete. Um, you don't need to complete them in one sitting. You can choose when's the most appropriate time for you to complete each one of them. But as soon as you have completed them, your report is available 
on that same portal where you found the links to the assessment. I will take you through a complete learning agility PDF, um, but for now, let's just look at the screenshots. That's just to give you an idea of what the profile looks like. I will explain what it means in a short while. Okay. So I am aware that I am talking for quite a while. I, I will pause just after this presentation and just check with Elmi if anybody has any questions. That's the first report that has been made available to you. The second report is called The Future Me. The Future Me is a result of the personality assessment, the career drives, and the interest assessment. So obviously, if you've done the personality and career drives for the learning agility Go, you don't need to repeat it for the future me. The future me is specifically designed to give individuals advice about their career direction. It will give you insight into where does your potential lie, what are your strongest areas of interest, and also what do you want from the work environment. So utilizing those bits of information, we will help to give you some advice about career direction. And here we see another screenshot of the summary of the Future Me uh, report. So that's the background information that I wanted to share with you before I actually quickly share the actual reports with you. I'm going to quickly switch back to Elmi to find out if there are any questions. Thank you, Jensen. Um, at the moment, there are no questions, so people really understand the explanations. I think when we get into the report, we may get more questions. Um, I think what is important is if you perhaps can explain to our participants what the validity of these reports are in terms of scientific evidence. Okay, thank you, Omi. Good question. So validity is a psychometric property of the assessments that we are using. Um, for an assessment to be valid, it means that we must have proven that it's measuring what it's actually saying that it's measuring. So if we're saying it's a personality assessment, it mustn't be measuring something like values or attitude or something else, but it must be measuring personality itself. Now for us to use an assessment in South Africa, we need to demonstrate to the Health Professions Council of South Africa that the assessment is valid and reliable and has been normed for a South African population. And that is something that we have done so all of the assessments are uh, normed, validated, and the reliability proven for a South African context. In other words, all of the assessments are giving a, an accurate view of how do you look compared to the typical South African. I have a question for you, Chancellor. Yes. Do these reports help with psychological research? Um, so let me just check if I understand that. Is it psychological research for us as the distributor of the assessment or for the individual? Right. I, Kiara, can you just say a bit more about what kind of psychological research you're referring to? So there are uh, instances where we do use the opportunity to, co to collect information towards um, validating instruments, towards building instruments and so on. Um, in this case, all of the instruments are already validated. So uh, here we are not collecting information towards research purposes. A second one, is the Future Me and Learning Agility Go assessments aimed at a specific age group or for which age groups can it be used for? Okay, good question. So the instruments have been designed for individuals in, uh, in the workplace. Um, the Future Me actually is designed for individuals from 14 years upwards because it is designed specifically for career counseling. So the norm group that we compare individuals against is a very well-balanced norm group. It includes individuals from all age ranges, as well as different um, ethnicities, uh, different employment statuses, level in the organization, academic level, and so on. Thank you. Then Kiara actually want to know whether their results will help towards collecting information on the research. Um, so as I said, that is something that we sometimes do, but in order to do that, we need to collect very, very detailed biographical information, which we haven't done in this case. So here the assessments are being launched uh, specifically for the individual to get benefit from. Another interesting one from Michelle. 
are the validity and reliability reports available to users? Well, it's certainly not information that we would um, hide in any way. It's usually very technical information. And if anybody is interested in that type of information, we're happy to share that with them. Thank you. Pierre Labiskogny, are these tools accurate in South African context only, or does it still accurate in international environments where the business culture is different? So when we report your results, we are reporting your results against a South African norm. In other words, we are saying, compared to the typical South African, how do you score? It is possible for us to run international normed reports, so we can give an indication of how do you look compared to the typical international individual. If that is what is more appropriate for you, so for example, if you think that you probably want to work internationally, so therefore an international report is more appropriate, I think the, the best would be to contact us directly so that we can actually generate a report comparing you to an international norm. But right. having said that, um, the South African population is not that different from the international population. So your South African report is not going to look very much different from an international report. If we were looking at cognitive ability, there we might see a slightly bigger difference. I'm going to take the last three questions, mindful of the time. With the learning agility, how related to Jung's, Jung's Carl Jung, I assume, personality types is the theory behind the self-awareness, change agility, mental agility, people agility, and results agility. So with the learning agility, how related to, how does it relate to Jung's personality types? So when we, uh... When we report on your learning agility, we rely on the personality information to give us an indication of what is your natural predisposition towards the different agilities. And we measure your personality utilizing the big five model of personality. The big five model has been chosen because it's the one that has been demonstrated to be the most relevant in a business context. Um, it is quite different from a Jungian model of personality. Um, the Jung model is what we might describe as a type-based personality assessment, whereas we utilize a trait-based personality assessment. Um, one of the primary differences is with the trait-based personality assessment, we get very rich information about the individual. So we're actually assessing the individual across 30 different individual personality scales, which is quite different from a trait-based personality, sorry, a type-based personality assessment that looks at classifying individuals within a particular descriptor. Okay, so it is a different type of personality assessment. And it's possible that if you look deeply into it, it's possible that you might find correlations. But remember here, we're also introducing the, motiv the motivations element. So it's not purely personality. Right, and here's another interesting one. Can you share which major industries are currently using this tool in South Africa? So there are, various industries using this uh, tool in South Africa. So some of those that I can think of, um, retail, manufacturing, uh, finance, um, academic institutions. Um, internationally, it's used across all sectors. Um, the ones that come to mind, the biggest users are energy sector, finance, retail, um, and banking, which will fall under finance. So it's really applicable across all sectors because all sectors experience change. So it would be relevant for all of these sectors. So we have many more questions, but let's go to the report and we can come back to these if we still have time. I do not want people to miss out on an example of what the report looked like. Thanks, Jantar. Okay, so Elmi, can you please let me know, do you see my screen? Yes, I do. Okay, so everyone, I'm assuming, can see the, the report that I am sharing. Yes, so this I'm sure they can. Of the Learning Agility Go report. I also want to point out that the Learning Agility Go, strictly speaking, is not a report. It's actually an interactive module on the platform that is designed to help you develop your learning agility. But it is possible to generate a PDF report at any point that you are busy with the module. This is an example of what that PDF could look like. So, 
Here you see the cover page. It's just telling you who the report belongs to and what the report title is. On the next page, you will see a brief definition of learning agility and also definitions of the five agilities that I have described previously. On this page, we explain how we actually arrive at your learning agility profile by measuring your personality and motivations and then using a model that uh, conceives of learning agility as having five dimensions with self-awareness being central to all of them. This page gives you an outline of what you can find in the report and describes the contents in brief. So up until this point, the report is fairly generic. But from this page onwards, it's quite specific to the individual. Here, in this gauge looking diagram or dashboard, we can see what your current level of learning agility is. So the orange is the indication of your current level of agility. And the end of the gray indicates the maximum level of learning agility that we do measure. So here we can see that this individual is well past the middle point. So we can assume that this person has above average learning agility. In addition to that, this light blue area is giving us an indication of what is this person's potential to improve their learning agility further based on their personality and their motivations profile. The paragraph just below describes this level of learning agility. So it's quite a good description of what we can expect from this person. On the right hand side, we see this individual's unique characteristics. So what's standing out about this individual? For example, this person appears to be quite inquisitive, has confidence in others, and strongly performance oriented. So those are your unique characteristics. On the next page, we have an overview of your five dimensions of learning agility. At a quick glance, we can see very clearly that this individual has a strength in the mental agility dimension. So the strongest score coming from, from the mental agility, that's saying to me that this individual, when faced with change and new situations, the response is to understand that situation, try and find out what's going on, understand the underlying mechanism, analyze it carefully, and then come up with new ideas to deal with that situation. The other scores are also fairly high. For example, result agility, also looking on the high side. So a high score on result agility says that when this person is faced with a new situation, they want to succeed and they will try and formulate a goal, they will persevere, they will try and try again in that situation to actually succeed. People agility is also coming up um, average to um, high. So that's saying that this person is comfortable um, talking to other individuals to find out how did you cope in the situation? What can I learn from you? How can we collaborate and become successful together? Okay. Self-awareness is looking almost exactly average for this person. So it's saying that this person is as self-aware as most other people, spends as much time as the typical person does in reflecting on how they've done things, can be critical of their performance when they feel the need. The relative lowest agility is change agility, and you can see it's still not low, but it's slightly lower than the average individual. It's saying that this person's preferred way of dealing with change is not to experiment and dive into the deep end. They probably want to think about it first, ask other individuals about it, and only then experiment with it. In terms of a learning context, your learning agility profile can also assist you there. Can people that are high on change agility, we know that they are likely to learn best if they are given an opportunity to actually experiment. If we throw them into the deep end, that's when they learn best. If you are high on mental agility, then we know that you'd like to think about things, like to analyze things, then you probably will benefit from being given access to information, to the material, and to being able to deb debate things with other individuals. If you're high on people agility, then we know that you enjoy learning from other people and with other people. So you probably will benefit from a coaching situation, also from a team situation, collaborating. So uh, working together with other individuals. If you're high on results agility, then we know that if we challenge you, if we give you tough deadlines, tough assignments, 
that's going to motivate you to try hard and therefore to learn better. High on self-awareness means that we need to give you that time and space to sit back, reflect on information, reflect on the impact it has on you, think about how it impacts on your performance in order to learn and apply that learning going forward. So that's your overall profile. On the next page, you see detailed information about firstly your change agility. So here's your current level of change agility. And the blue is telling us to what extent can this individual develop their learning agility even further. This person, as you can see, has quite significant potential to improve their, their change agility. This paragraph describes this level of change agility. On the right hand side, there are three tips that are quite specific to this person. They are based on how the individual scored on specific personality scales and specific motivation scales. So this individual's tip, tips are not necessarily going to look similar to somebody else that has a similar level of change agility. Okay. When you are on the module itself, if you hover over the particular tip, the system will tell you how effective is this tip likely to be for you by giving the tip a star rating. So that is going to assist you in deciding which one of these three tips is going to be most useful for me. So although they're all very specific for you as an individual, they all are likely to produce different levels of um, improvement and the star rating will help you to decide which tip you should actually implement. So you receive this type of information for all of the five agilities. Okay, so here you see mental agility. The person actually has potential to improve to the maximum compared to other individuals. Okay. Um, people agility, also significant potential to develop further. Result agility, high to start off with, but still there's room for improvement. Now, as you go through the module, you're expected to select at least one tip from each of the sections that you are going to work on. In self-awareness, this is the only area where you only receive two tips. For the other four agilities, you're going to receive four tips. And once you have selected your five tips, one from each uh, section, the summary is going to tell you how much improvement, you'll see now this has changed to a darker blue. If you successfully employ all of these tips, this is the level of improvement that you can expect. That's where you currently are. And that's where you could be if you're successful with these five tips. Now, I would recommend to take it one step at a time. To uh, Five tips can be quite ambitious, but maybe choose one or two to start off with. Once you have selected your tip, that's the, the system's work done. Now is where your work actually starts. For each tip, you need to say, what am I actually going to do in order to implement this tip? So what's my plan of action? Okay. And you can type that in here. And remember, this is an interactive tool, so you can change your mind, you can come back to it later, you can change your plan, and you can download a PDF at any point if you want to take this to your coaching session. What we also will do is we will train facilitators around the country at the various universities and academic institutions. So there will be somebody available virtually, so you can make an appointment with somebody virtually to actually discuss your report, and help you with the development planning and maybe even with the monitoring and evaluation. Okay. So here we see examples of what this individual did. Okay. And if we go to the next page, more examples of how this person is going to implement their tips. Okay. The important thing to remember is that you can use your learning agility to both improve your academic performance as well as to improve your readiness for the workplace. We know that academic studies gives you the skills and the knowledge that might be necessary in your particular profession, but does it actually equip you to become effective in the workplace itself, to make that transition from the academic environment to the work environment? And this is something that learning agility is going to assist you with. The higher your learning agility, the more likely it is that you can become effective quite quickly. Okay. Elmi, I think maybe I should pause for a bit. Um, I do know that we are taking a bit more time than we initially planned. 
Um, how do you see the way forward? Right, so I quickly want to highlight some questions here. First, is the teaching one-on-one -on -one, and how long is it is one expected to take it in terms of completion if they've registered? So maybe if we can just explain that it's assessment and not teaching and the time you have to complete it. Okay, so there's no time limit for each of the assessments. Um, but as a rough guideline, the personality assessment will take you maybe between 20 and 25 minutes to complete. And the motivations assessment is slightly shorter. It will take you maybe 15 to 20 minutes to complete. When you are completing them, make sure that you are doing so in an environment where you're not distracted, you're not disturbed by other individuals. If you're struggling with connectivity, it's not a problem. If you do, uh, if you do need to leave the assessment, you can re-enter the assessment at the point at which you actually stopped. Then the report is available immediately after you've finished the assessments. Right, um, how do you create or get a national norm from which to assess against? In other words, so, to say it's high or low? Yeah, so good question. So we ha actually have to gather data from a large number of people. So we might have gathered data from, let's say, 3,000 people. But of those 3,000 people, we need to make sure that it is representative in terms of age, ethnicity, educational background, uh, level in the organization, and so on. So we balance the norm group for all of those factors to make sure that when we report, we are actually commenting on the typical South African. So we've assessed a large number of people and then refined it to make sure that the eventual norm group is representative of the average or typical South African. The last one here before we continue, can agility level differ as a result of our environmental influence and not individual traits? Very good question. Um, so your personality, we do know that personality takes a while to develop and it usually sort of stabilizes and settles down maybe roughly around the ages of 25 to 30 and it is associated with brain development as well. Your motivations, that is related to your personality. So also, uh, it, we do expect that it, it should settle down uh, to some extent around the same age, but we also know that your motivational profile can be impacted on by, for example, where you are in your life. So individuals that are new in the workplace, that are ambitious and driven, career-oriented, their motivation profile might look slightly different from somebody that's nearing retirement. So the environment can impact on your motivational profile. However, because the assessments are psychometrically sound assessments, day-to-day events are not going to impact on your results. So for example, if you're feeling demotivated on a day, or if you've had a bit of an argument with somebody on a day and you feel a bit upset, it's not going to impact on your assessment results. If you find yourself in a life-changing situation, for example, you were recently retrenched or um, there is the, the threat that you might be retrenched and you take an assessment during that period, that could impact on the assessment. Another example is if you're in a work situation that you are unhappy with, and you are there for an extended period of time, let's say two years or three years, that can impact on your assessment results. Okay, so basically it's the major life-changing events that impact on assessment results. Thank you, Jonathan. I think that um, we can just summarize the second report. I think learning agility is the most um, important one of the two. And um, then, I think I don't want to keep people longer than what they've signed up for. Okay, let me just share that report. Okay, so this report is called the Future Me Report. In order to generate this report, we would also need you to complete the interest assessment. The interest assessment is the shortest of the three. It might take you about 15 minutes to complete. Okay, once you've completed the three assessments, the report can be generated and it can give you a broad idea of which fields of work you should consider. In this example, it's saying consider writing, entertainment, and marketing. Now, the report is deliberately quite broad because you want to leave the individual's options as open as possible. Okay. So these recommendations are based on the fact that 
your top two areas of interest are the artistic environment and social environment. We measure six different areas of interest, and this individual has shown the greatest interest in those two areas. We measure 20 motivators. Of the 20 motivators, these four come up as the top four motivators for this person. Motivators are basically the things that the individual seeks in the work environment. So what must the work environment provide for the individual to feel engaged in that work environment? Okay. Then lastly, we look at where does the person's potential lie? Potential from a personality point of view. So what sorts of fields of work are aligned to this person's personality? For this individual, the top four competencies, so competency being that collection of knowledge, skills, and attributes that are necessary to perform a job. So this person's top four areas are service-oriented, planning, devotion to quality, sensitivity. As an example, the definition of devotion to quality is focusing on the level of quality of work, making sure that the type of work you produce is of a high quality and also the type of work that other people produce is of a high quality as well. If, for example, you were a surgeon, then devotion to quality would be quite important. So that's a summary. It then tells you what is your relative level of interest versus motivation versus competency for those three broad areas that have been recommended for you. So if you look at this one, we see that in terms of writing, this person has a strong interest in this field. The motivations, however, is probably just above average. So it means that the person might get what they want out of a writing type of environment, but it's, um, it's more likely that, for example, um, marketing is going to give them what they want. Okay. In terms of their actual potential, there is quite a good match. So we do know that the person does have what it takes from a personality point of view for the writing type of professions. And here you can see these three suggestions of specific professions. Once again, remember, it's quite broad so that the person's options do remain open. Um, here's a nice example of where the person has strong interest in the entertainment field, but it's unlikely the person is going to get what they want out of the work environment from an entertainment profession you see that the motivations fit is quite low. But the person does have the personality fit for the various occupations recommended there. So when you look at your report, you would need to decide how do you balance these three areas, maybe which one is most important to you, and use those to decide eventually on the broad um, area that was recommended. You will also incorporate this information with things like uh, what are your ambitions, are there any family expectations? Uh, what sort of resources do you have available to fulfill your career aspirations? Um, what other expectations are they placed on you? And bring all of those things together to inform your career decision. Now, this report is useful before you actually enter the academic um, context for you to decide which um, academic area you want to actually pursue. Um, once you're in, um, at university, it can still be useful because it can help you to narrow down your choice of professions and careers. It can also help to validate whether you are actually in the right field. So that was a summary. Then the report goes into the detail for each of the three sections. Here you see a description of the six different interest areas and a detailed description of the top two for this person. Okay. Um, then in terms of motivators, it gives you an idea of how the person scored for the 20 specific motivators. So you can see quite clearly, most strongly motivated by efficiency, realization, and quality, and analyzing to an extent. Okay. In terms of the competencies, this part of the report, it gives you a detailed description of what we can expect from you as an individual in 10 competency areas. On the cover, it identified four competencies, but later on in the report, it actually gives you detailed information for your top 10 competencies. Now, these descriptions are not generic, but they are based on your specific personality profile, and it gives a very good indication of what can we expect from this individual in terms of planning, in terms of devotion to quality, etc. And these are relatively your highest competency potential areas. Okay. So compare these with the demands of the job 
to get an indication of how well you will fit that job. And there you can see 10 different competencies described for this individual. At the end of the report, you have the definitions of the 20 motivators that we measured. Previously, you were only given um, the level of interest in the different motivators. And then you have the definitions of the 10 competencies that were identified for this individual as being the highest potential for this individual. Remember, we have a library of 44 competencies. So of all 44, these are the 10 that this person has the highest potential for. Okay, so that is the Future Me report, Elmi. Thank you very much, Chancellor. And I have another question um, that touch on validity and reliability. How do you test God against or make sure that people's answers are not coming from the internal biases? For example, if people told me that I should study medicine growing up, I'm probably more likely to choose answers that would point me towards studying medicine. How does your test make sure that this doesn't happen and that our results are free of this kind of bias? Okay, so if you think about the interest assessment, the interest assessment, I think, can be uh, perceived as being uh, quite transparent. So that's an assessment that might be a little bit more open to the biases that you describe. Um, but the other two assessments, the personality assessment, for example, the actual items that you see are in no way related to any profession because the assessment is actually aimed at a pure personality report which we then align to the different competencies and eventually the different um, occupations that we, that we can recommend. So the personality assessment is not really open to personal biases. And actually what we can measure in the personality assessment is whether the person is overestimating their performance or their potential in any particular area. Uh, similarly, the, the motivations assessment it might come across as slightly more transparent than the uh, interest assessment, or sorry, than the personality assessment. Um, but remember when we report, we are reporting your relatively strongest motivators compared to others. Okay, so uh, even if you overestimated your, in, your motivators in the different areas, we are still going to pick up those that are strongest for you as an individual. Thank you, Jansen. Um, we've answered all the questions that were posed. And I think the next um, point of action for our members will be to actually go and see what do we offer as Golden Key in terms of learning agility and future me. And then you can take up the assessments online. Please note that for all members, the top five competency assessments are for free. So just go to our website and we will also place on the various telegram groups the information again on the various assessments and the costs attached to it. And then I also just want to mention next week we will send out a call to all our members that's employed at universities or alumni to be trained as facilitators just on these two reports and to give feedback on these two reports. Um, and it will, be, it will be at no cost. And um, it's in total will entail six hours of training. And then also you will have to pledge an hour to the maximum of 40 hours till the middle of December to give feedback to other members who did the assessments online. So, and Jantharin will also be one of the trainers in the training of trainers. So thank okay. you very much, everybody. I just want to say, Jantharin, Golden Key members are just extraordinary. We still have 51 people online, even though we almost 15 minutes over the time. That is just great. Thank you very much. Last word from you, Jantharin. Yeah, I just want to uh, just make sure that it's clear for everyone. Um, that we're going to train people that will be made available to members to consult for their feedback. So there isn't any commitment required from you as a Golden Key member. If you've done the assessment, um, you will then make contact with one of those individuals that's trained and they have the commitment to actually make sure they provide at least 40 hours of service to Golden Key members. 
Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. We have to clearly define who will complete the assessment and who will be some of the trainers that will help to give feedback. Thank you very much, everybody. And if there's any more questions, please let us know. Um, you have our email address and um, you can pose any question to us and we will make sure that we respond. We do have um, many people saying thank you uh, for this session. So thank you very much for your attendance and your attention for so long. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening and keep safe. Thank you. Thank you.